I um I forgot. I forgot a category of people. How many public health lawyers and lawyers do we have here today? Stand up. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Yay, OK. Um, didn't I do educators? I'm sorry. How many, how many educators do we have here? I really apologize. I, I keep you in my mind all the time. Is there anybody I left out? <laughs> Has everybody stood up at least one? Okay, good. Oh, faith, faith. 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 Okay, great. And how many faith faith based people? That would include a lot of people here, but people working in, in faith based organizations. Yes. Disabilities, and I'm um, uh, coordinating an initiative that's around sexuality education. We have uh, just a lot of adults who are so incredibly vulnerable to all the things we're talking right. about. They're not children, and they, but they are consumers. And I just wanted to invite people to have the people in mind too. So okay, thank you. One of our our, our working lunches is um, networking on sexualization, and so that might be a good place for you know for you to to go. Okay. And I'll, I'll tell you where that is. Our, our next pre presenter is Joe Kelly. Most of you know him. Um, I kind of think of him as the anti-porn, which is why I put him in this very, very, very difficult position. Um, Joe Kelly is the president and co-founder of the national nonprofit Dads and Daughters. He's an author of numerous books. Um, and um, he's the father of two girls. And he's one of CCFC's steering committee members good friend and colleague, Joe Kelly. Thank you, and I apologize for having to do this. I know this is very annoying to have to sit through. I know, I'm sorry. I said I'm, I apologize for having to do this on the screen, as I know it's very annoying to have to sit through somebody doing this at the beginning of a talk. Um, <clears throat> I'm upset. How many of you are upset? Stand up. Okay, sit down, please. How many of you are pissed off? Stand up. Okay, pissed off, too. Okay. Yeah, how many of you are feeling like you want to puke? Yeah. Okay. It's important to acknowledge that, all right? I also want to acknowledge the fact that it's probably, for a lot of you, it's going to be really hard for you to listen to my topic. Look at the title of my topic, okay? Who gives a shit about this after listening to Gail, right? But I think, no, I mean, but I'm, but yeah, but there are, you know, maybe five hands went up. Right? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there are some of you, you know, me included, there's part of me that's thinking, who gives a shit about this, right? But I think... Um, the, my topic, which is how this stuff harms boys and men, uh, is important to talk about, even though we've just been through this traumatic experience of seeing how graphically it harms women. As Gail and I were talking about this beforehand, that unless men get into this fight against the porn industry and against what the porn industry represents, which I'm going to argue is the pseudo-sexualization of our culture, Unless men get involved in that fight, we can't win it. We just can't. And so we got to understand how to make men see that it is in their selfish best interest to get into this fight against porn and pseudo-sexualization. And that's what I'm going to be talking about. So I hope you can come there with me. I think porn is the most vivid example of what I call pseudo-sexuality. Now, what does that mean? You've been hearing a lot about sexualization and hypersexualization. Uh, in the last couple of days, I think it's important to distinguish between hypersexualization, sex and sexuality injected too much and too soon into the lives of our children, and the fact that nearly all of those ideas and images are fake. They bear little or no relation to real sexuality, which as Audrey told us, or as Audrey learned, is an essential part of our humanity. 
The fakeness combines with the hyperness to violate our daughters and our sons. And so, you know, pseudo-sexualization is not a very elegant term. It doesn't come trippingly off the tongue. You know, some pe I've argued with some people about whether I should even use it, including my wife, but let's work with it. My topic requires describing the price of porn and hyper and pseudo-sexualization, uh, what price that exacts in the lives and health of boys and men. So I want to ask you to listen with an open mind and without keeping score. You know, clearly women and girls are deeply harmed by this, but men also suffer in real ways that are different and that are less visible. And that's what I want to talk about. I want to look at how actual boys and men are profoundly damaged by pseudo-sexualization. And I, I usually don't read my speeches, those of you who have heard me speak before, and um, again, you know, a little bit of an apology. This, this is such an important topic and I want to make sure I say it right. So that's why I'm reading, okay? If porn is the most vivid example of pseudosexuality, which I think it is, then pseudosexuality's logical conclusions include not just porn, they include sexual assault. They include deeply distorted relationships. And they include the emotional death of men. We and our sons pay a large, sometimes fatal price for the pseudo-sexualization of childhood. And I'm going to show you an example. And this example may not be entirely clear to you at the beginning, but I hope it is by the end. I want you to watch this 30-second commercial, keeping in mind the images that Gail just showed us. And do a gut check while you watch. <laughs> Anybody? Yuck. Somebody said yuck. Anybody else have any reactions? What does it got to do with Sprite? What does it got to do? Let's leave aside the fact that it's about Sprite, okay? And I know that's hard to ask. Seriously, I, that's hard to ask you to do in a conference like this, but please do. Let's forget the fact that it's an ad and it's for soda pop. Any other reactions to it? I have mixed feelings because I see after Gail, but at the same time, having a daughter and a father who engage in really playful, you know, the transformation of fatherhood makes me kind of sad to think that it has to be so cynical. Okay. And I think, you know, I, does anybody else feel that same way? Yeah. Okay. And, and, I, and I really, Rebecca, I really hate to cut off any other reactions, but I have very little time, so I want to try and jump ahead. And I think that this is, you know, this is my reaction, I'll just own that, that, you know, I have very mixed feelings about it. You know, especially after seeing Gail's images and thinking about pornography, you know, apply, uh, you know, and it may very well be, I'll, I'll be honest about it, it may very well be that the, the creators of this ad were trying to play both ends, you know, pl pl trying to play both sides of it. But, you, you know, uh, apply the most negative aspersions on this ad, his head coming up from underneath her shirt. Is that fondling? Or is he just giving her a lovely, loving, playful raspberry on the belt, right? Uh, the jewelry and the makeup, is that twisted sexual play? The reaction of the guys at the door, homophobia? Well, yeah, that applies no matter which way you look at it, right? So, you know, dad's final smile at the end there, is it that it's worth the embarrassment in order to get his sexual jollies met? Or is it that it's worth the embarrassment because he's willing to play Barbies with his daughter, you know, to play dress up with his daughter? Okay, 